also i want to tell one more thing file recent code operation sir instead of uh, picking the file from the local path we can also pick from the remote machine also sir remote path in. yeah here i can show only local path that's the reason i am saying local path you can pick it from anywhere okay sir okay. okay when i talk about um, um, web service standards right when i talk about web service standards we, i i explained that we need to uh, structure the uh, the endpoint url uh, readable format okay readable format if a, if a user if a can if the client read that uh, endpoint they should understand what that endpoint is doing okay i told several information about the web service best practice okay so here whenever i add the customer i want to add the customer once it's uh, uh, after successful ad what i uh, what i told we need to add uh, we need to send we need to send the proper response to the client saying that one customer is added one customer is added so the response word must be 201 created whenever i add any resource we need to give 201 as a response code okay for when you do the exception handling whenever any exception happens what we did uh, we throw the we throw the exception we throw the exception sorry we catch that exception and we throw the exception as the response to the client with the proper error code in the error scenario we handled it properly when i show the example in the error scenario we handled it properly whenever the exception happened what we did uh, we catch that exception we construct the error message we send that error message as a response to the client with the proper error code but in the happy path we are not doing anything here right we are not doing anything so please practice that the, the what i am trying to say is use this class this class is available already available in the chat right use this class all the happy path please return proper error code here here i am saying only customer right here i am saying only customer change the response uh, customer response to as a response entity um when you look at um, my validation class we are sending as a response entity right response entity and we are passing the error object then we are passing the proper error code but this is not happening in the happy path whatever example i showed i am not doing that but i told that but we are not implemented as assignment you try to do that okay hmm? for example i'll comment out this let's say if customer not equal to null after creating it return new customer right new customer then return new response what happened response entity then customer this customer object comma http status created okay then I'm saying nothing. Turn new or sell. Okay. So here I'm, what I am saying is, if uh, customer object is not null, In the service class, we already um, uh, in the service class we are not doing. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, here itself we can do. My well, go to um, controller class. Then we can say here else. So in this place, I will give it to you, uh, give it to you guys, okay. If it is customer is null meaning, we have to throw an exception here. Please throw the exception. That exception, please catch here. You should not say resource not found exception. Create some valid, valid exception or implement one method here. Implement one method here and populate this error object. Populate this error object, okay. 
whenever customer is null here where is that whenever customer is null here please throw that exception saying that um, um, what whatever you have here you have to do is throw new your exception that's it okay you have to say throw your exception when you say throw uh, your exception what will happen here that corresponding responsibility will come as a response to the client okay please do it by yourself okay like that like that all the endpoint all the all the endpoint returning the only customer of that customer object right please change it to as a response entity um, you have to return that response entity as a response to the client that response entity contain your resource as well as the status quo as of now we are doing only in the error scenario in the error scenario we are sending a response entity we are passing the message error message we are passing the status code i am expecting you to do that in a happy path all the happy path please try to implement that change the uh, change the customer object as a response entity then return as a response entity with the proper status code can you try this hmm? yes sir yeah hmm. If you're not able to try, uh, let you know. Uh, I will help you out. Okay, please try that because uh, if, you, if you do practice, then only you will get more familiar. Okay. Hmm? I hope you understand uh, about this response entity, uh, about this status code. If you if you understand well, definitely you can do this. Do by yourself. Okay. Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay. Next one is we're going to talk about Swagger. Now we're going to talk about Swagger. Okay, what is use of Swagger? I'm a Java backend developer. I'm a backend developer. Okay, I created all the REST endpoint. I created all all, all REST endpoint. It's working fine. Now this is the time to hand over this um, uh, REST endpoint to the client. The client meaning anyone. It's a, maybe is Angular developer, React developer, Android developer, or any other client. If client can be any other, they will consume our uh, rest endpoint. They will use our rest endpoint for their purpose. If you want to use that rest endpoint by the third party, by client, they should know uh, what this rest endpoint is doing, what is the parameter we need to pass, what is the response it will return. So they have to know about, they have to learn about the our rest endpoint, right? For that, we need to create our own documentation. We have to provide the documentation to client people by reading the documentation. They can work with our REST endpoint. Okay. But as of now, whatever the REST endpoint we are creating here, right? We don't have any documentation. We don't have, we don't have any documentation. So if you want to create any doc documentation for REST endpoint that we're creating, we can use a Swagger. We can use a Swagger. Swagger is a very super tool using that we can generate documentation dynamically whenever you change whenever you change any rest endpoint details automatically it will create a documentation according to that uh, rest endpoint we can simply provide that swagger url to the client the client can read that documentation they can understand even they can test even they can test also as a developer we, have, we can also test once we integrate the swagger through swagger interface we can test all the rest endpoint okay this is the purpose of swagger using swagger we can generate a nice document for read uh, for, for our rest endpoint okay let's see how to do that okay if you want to integrate swagger we need to add one artifact here i have examples already mm -hmm. This is a dependency we need to add. io.springfox springfox iPhone bootstart. We, have, we need to add this uh, endpoint. Okay, I will uh, using. I don't want to use this project. I'll using this one. I'll close other one. Others. I'll close other ID.
Okay. Go to your pom XML file. Add this. Once you add it, this application eligible to integrate Swagger. Then better Maven reload the project. Okay, then. I want to create one configuration file for Swagger. New class. I am saying that Swagger config. Swagger config. Then this, since this is a configuration file, I need to say add configuration. Then we need to use one more annotation. Enable Swagger. Enable Swagger. Okay, we have to say enable Swagger too. Then we need to create a we need to inject one bin called docket bin. It's a docket bin, okay? At bin. Docket, docket, it's a docket API. Okay, so API. We need to inject this API. Okay, uh, um, what is the purpose of admin annotation? I told about this uh, annotation in the second session, I believe. What is the purpose of admin? Any idea? Creates the object. Creates the object. Uh, Creates the object. Yeah, correct. Create the object. Then what it will do? It will inject that object. It will deploy that. Uh, sorry, it will deploy that object in application context. The bin is creating the bin. This annotation creating a docket object. That object registered in our Spring Boot application context or IOC container. Okay, it, this is doing uh, whatever uh, at service annotation doing. This is doing whatever add component annotation doing. Add component. Whenever you are, you use add service annotation in particular class, what it's doing? It is registering this particular class in Spring Boot application context, right? Very similarly, add bin. This add bin tag. This sorry. This add bin annotation registering our Docket API, Docket class in our Spring Boot application context. Also, I told uh, what is the difference between add service add bin. Why we, why we need to use admin? I told that I don't know if people remember or not. Huh? Admin, admin annotation should be fall under the add configuration class. Correct. But uh, add service is uh, 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 registering the object in the context. Yeah, that's correct. The purpose is whenever register any component any java class in ioc container or application context i want to do some activity i want to do i want to set some data i want to do some default data i want to do some configuration on that object while registering inside a ioc container that time i can use admin okay here i am here i am rejecting docket object inside an application context while injecting i want to do some configuration i want to do some configuration Okay, through that configuration, I can enable Swagger. I can do proper Swagger configuration. Okay. So, Swagger annotation, what is this?
so remember you need to uh, import this uh, from this where is that a contact or a list contact from this particular from this package okay it was imported some other package previously So this contact class is coming from Swagger library. Through this object, what I am saying, new contact, I am saying who is the author of this documentation for installing. Then what is the end website to access? This is the website. Then what is the contact email? Sales at attest.com. Then this is the contact detail, the owner information. Then API info, API info equal new API info. This is also coming from Swagger. I am saying that API title is a test API, test API description, then version is a 1.0, then terms and services. If you have a terms and services, you can you can uh, use that link here. Then uh, next parameter is that we have to pass this contact detail here. You have to pass this contact detail here. Then license. If you have a license, you have to pass this license information. Then you can pass that license URL here. URL here. There is any additional information. There is any additional information you want to pass you can use this as of now i'm passing as an empty list okay then after defining your uh, here here i am defining information some information about my documentation my swagger documentation okay Then inside this bin method, API method, return new docket object. I am returning this docket, uh, docker, docket object by initializing and passing my document type is a swagger2. My document type is a swagger2. Then API info. Just I am passing this API info. API info. Then produces. Producers, I am saying what is the response data for your api what is the producers and the consumes what is request and response data producer is the produce also uh, produce application json also consumes application json this information i am saying here okay so this is a basic configuration of swagger i have i, I am saying that uh, my documentation type is a swagger to that then i am passing this api information then i am saying what is the produce and the consume type that's it uh, this is the basic configuration if you start this application you are able to see your documentation for your rest endpoint when I come to this controller class in, in this controller class i have a only one i have a only one endpoint right let me create one more endpoint public res response entity Okay, let me start the application. Get mapping, I am saying is print.
日的。Yeah, how it started. Now let's check. Localhost eight zero eight zero. There is one URL called Swagger. What is that URL? Swagger. Yeah. We have to use this URL. Localhost eight zero eight zero Swagger hyphen UI slash index dot html. When you open that, you will get one nice user interface. See here, whatever I have given in the Swagger Swagger configuration. In the Swagger configuration file and the Java file, I have given this information, right? That information you can see a test API, API docs, a test API description, terms of services, contact name, Suresh Stalin, email, the license information. This is a basic error control coming from Spring Boot customer controller. I created a one class called customer controller, right? Customer controller. For that, it's creating one section here, customer controller. This customer controller having a two endpoint. One is post endpoint. One is a get endpoint. Here I given post endpoint and get endpoint, right? Hmm? This is a post with get. They showing here. When you click this post endpoint, it will open. Here it's saying that what is the request body? Based on our Customer object based on our customer object, it's saying what is our uh, request body. It's saying if you want to test this uh, uh, endpoint, simply you can click try out, try it out. When you say try it out, based on that uh, documentation, it's showing that uh, JSON request, right? JSON request. Now I can say first rate email. Yes, at gmail.com. Fee equal to 100. Name equal to Kessel. Then execute. Click execute. One click execute, you will get some response. See a response, response body. response body then response setup everything is coming here so we can use this as a client tool we can test it if you integrate swagger in your Spring Boot application also we can send this your customer to test your apis okay now i want to add some additional information these are default uh, document oh, yes, sir i'm having no doubt uh, uh, if we want to send any request letter uh, in, from this application, how can we send that? Uh? Yeah, from by default, you cannot send from here. By default, you cannot send from here. If you want to send from here, you need to add one annotation here. There is an annotation called at request letter. At, for example, uh, in the post mapping, right, we can pass header information here, right? Uh, that is yeah, yeah. understand. Um, uh, if you want to send yeah. header from here, there is no option. This documentation generated based on based on this API. Based okay. on this API. Here you don't mention any request information here. So it's not generating anything here. Okay, that's the reason we are not able to see. Here you can say at requested the
header parameter I forgot that annotation and let me check. Let the param annotation in spring. And the same thing only request header. Yeah. I'm saying country code, okay? Country code. Country. Just I want to print that. Uh, Oh, it's already continuing. So after adding this uh, request header, you can see one more field in that uh, swagger. Server is started. Now I'm going to invert that. See here, country code. There is a one more section is coming here header. It's a country code, right? So when you say try out, you can pass anything here. I'm passing USA. Okay. Then changing the data. Second straight, then yes at gmail.com, ps10, then string name is a yb, then total value, what is total value? Total value, why is giving us here? Okay, okay, So your country is USA. Well, in the server side, I'm printing that country name. Whatever value coming in header, header, I'm, it's coming here. It's coming here. I'm that is passing from here. Through this way, we can pass the header data from server. Okay. Thank you, sir. notes okay the next example is i want to uh, improve more the i want to improve, improve my documentation more that section we're going to see now mm, the test controller there is uh, class. okay just to copy this When you look at this uh, Swagger UI, I don't have any status code. When you see here, this doesn't have anything, right? Uh, what status code it will return. And these, the, those information I don't have here, right? I want to mention those information. So just uh, Swagger provides some annotations. Hmm. 
So at the AP operation, this annotation coming from Swagger value. Uh, here I am passing some information about the this API. Adding adding a new customer. Adding a new customer. Response returns customer object. Then notes some more description. If you want more description, we can add here. Then using at the API response. Again, inside the API response annotation, we can pass an array of API response. Okay, here I am passing here API response, response code equal to 200. 200 meaning success. 401 is not authorized. 403 forbidden. 404 not found. I want to display this information as part of my Swagger documentation. For that, we need to use this annotation. Okay, you can try this annotation with other endpoints also. Okay. Yeah, started now. See the post mapping now. It has more information. Success meaning okay. A two not one created. Not authorized. So all this information coming here. Also, you can see this uh, here. Adding a new customer. Adding a new, the whatever description added. That information is coming here. So. Uh, Using the Sagar EAP, there are various annotations that provided by Sagar. We can use the annotation. Uh, go to external library. Here you can see Swagger. Where is Swagger? Yeah, Swagger annotations. Where is Swagger annotations? So these many APIs are available. This two can play on all are self-explanatory only. Okay, nothing complex. Just you need to use this annotation. Just to understand what is the purpose of this annotation, you can um, use it by passing some parameters. See in the library, you can see this many annotations are available. Um, just play around it. So now you understand what is the purpose of Swagger. Swagger is only for documentation for your HTTP. That's it. The next topic is uh, we'll discuss now. Next topic is we'll discuss uh, filters. Okay. Filters. I uh, will see what is the purpose of filters. Any idea filters? Pre-process the request, post-process the response. Hmm. Okay. Correct. What's happening here? is a client client sending a request to the server that in our case is a tomcat server spring boot uses a tomcat server right tomcat server if any if you take a general tomcat server don't take uh, that spring boot spring boot perspective if you take a tomcat server you are developing a web application using tomcat server uh, in the tomcat server we deploy the servlet servlet is a class it's a java class it will process the request and response which is coming from the client whenever send any request the, the request if you will, um, the, the request go to the servlet servlet process the request based on the request the servlet again send the response to the send the response to the client okay for example uh, this is your servlet This is for general scenario for all web application in the
request so request will go here go here okay now i'll go into remove this box okay then similarly the response back to the client response back to the client okay hmm? Whenever client send a request, the request processed by your servlet, the servlet uh, return the response to the client. This servlet will be available inside a Tomcat server. Tomcat, uh, Tomcat server, okay, web container. It is available in the web container. Um, uh, Tomcat server provides the web container. Inside a web container, we will have a servlet. The servlet is a responsibility to processing a request and a response. Whatever request coming from the client, that request processed by servlet. Based on that request, servlet send. Uh, send the response back to the client this is a normal flow okay now whenever process this request whenever process the request i want to uh, do some additional task i want to do some additional task in such a case we can use the filters using filters we can intercept the request using filters we can intercept the request and the response before uh, processing the request by the servlet i want to check i want to validate the request I want to do some manipulation on the request before sending a response to the client. I want to validate the response. I want to validate the response. I, I, I want to do some manipulation on the response. In such a case, we can use the filters. Filters, using filters, we can intercept the request and response which is coming from the client. Um, okay, Re, sorry, uh, client normally sent by the request. Um, client sending the request, that request we can intercept using a filters once doing that manipulation then we can send that request to the servlet now servlet uh, processing the request based on that request servlet sending the response back to the client before sending the response to the client filter capture that response and then process the uh, do some manipulation on the response and send back to the client this is the purpose of filters okay now i can put one more box here this will act as a filter For all request response intercepted by this filter for some additional activity, additional manipulations. Okay. In the Spring framework, uh, we are creating a controller, right? We are creating a controller, client sending a response. From the controller, we are uh, executing a particular uh, rest endpoint. Okay. Whenever you send a request from the client, from the client, that request to go to one servlet called dispatcher servlet to go to one servlet called dispatcher servlet spring work spring framework having a one servlet called dispatcher servlet okay that dispatcher servlet pro, uh, process all the request response which is coming from client when you see here in the dispatch the spring sorry the spring web you may see See the somewhere else there is a one annotation dispatch servlet servlet dispatcher servlet where is the handler package only sorry is that the handler uh, yeah handler Hand, package handler handler. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah yeah above, above that the strike line you can see Just scroll up mm. the, yeah uh, above one Dispatcher servlet web request. This is the one or what? Yeah, this is the one, right? Huh? So there's the dispatcher servlet. You can see here web, but this is the dispatcher servlet. 
implemented in spring frame or spring web mvc okay whatever request is coming from the client that request processed by the dispatcher servlet this dispatcher will process the request based on the request it will decide which endpoint should call it will decide which uh, uh, endpoint should call okay I like that response it, it will generate uh, whatever response we are constructing that response um, send back to the client through the dispatcher servlet okay now before manipulating this dispatcher servlet i want to intercept i want to intercept all the requests and response through filters i want to validate for example whenever send a request by the client i want to check i want to check is a right client or not is a right person uh, i want to authorize so that that kind of code we can do in filter classes that kind of code we can do in filter classes also i want to log some information whenever prof the request i want to log that request information to the server log so we can do that in filter classes okay and then i want to uh, uh, focus particular url in my, in my project there is a one endpoint that endpoint is very very sensitive endpoint i want to uh, uh, log that endpoint whenever called that endpoint by the client i want to log that endpoint in particular log file only that endpoint okay not all the endpoint um, so in such a case we can use the filters okay this kind of code we can go with filter okay we'll see how to implement filter now I have already created one class called handle request response filter. Generally, through filter, we can manipulate anything on the request and response. That is the purpose of filter. Okay, whenever send a request, whenever send a response back to the client, I want to do some manipulation on that request and response. In such a case, that respective code we can implement in filter class. If you want to implement filter class, we need to create one class. That class must implement with filter. That class must implement with filter then that class should annotate it with component tag we have to register this filter in our spring ioc so we are using a component tag this filter having a three uh, uh, method overhead method one is init another one is do filter another one is destroy this particular init method invoke only one time only one time whenever start the application that time it will reach that time this method will invoke whenever destroy whenever shut down the application that, that time the destroy method will invoke this do filter method invokes each and every request whenever clients send a request that time this filter do filter automatically get called automatically get called now in the inside this filter method we can do whatever you want whatever you want before processing a request if you want to do any manipulation on request object or response object we have to do that respective code inside this do filter method this method will invoke each and every time when any request happening whenever any request happened by the client that time this do filter get invoked do filter get invoked in this class what i am doing here http servlet response uh, before that, uh, uh, this do filter having a three parameter. The do filter having a three parameter, servlet request, servlet response, then filter chain. Three parameter we are having here, right? Servlet response, now, now I want to manipulate, now I want to manipulate my uh, response object. For that, we need to use a servlet response. Okay, HTTP servlet response. Here we are having a servlet request and servlet response. This is the parent class of this particular HTTP servlet response. So I'm converting this class as a HTTP servlet response. Then I'm adding one header. In the response header, I'm adding filter one equal to, this is header constructed in filter one. Constructed in filter one. I don't want to put filter one. I'll put uh, this, okay. So whenever you send a request, this do filter get in work, that time, servlet request servlet response filter chain available in your parameter 
it, through this parameter variable you can modify your request object response object okay request object object response object if you want to modify that request object i am here converting that response servlet response as a servlet http servlet response okay this is a child class of servlet response so i am converting it to my child class uh, that is a servlet http servlet response this response object in this response object i am adding one header servlet response dot add header this is a header name then i am passing one value in the response header i am changing this response typically it will go to the client side after successful response this response will go to the client side when go to the client side at the time of going response to the client side i am modifying this header then whenever send a request by the client i am capturing that request whenever send any request by the client i am capturing that request here i am setting one attribute country equal to india country equal to india so whenever send a request what i am doing here first i am setting a request i'll keep it here first line in the request object i am adding one attribute then after processing request server sending the response in the response object i am adding one header according to this code my expectation is i am able to access this value in my controller class i am able to access this value in my controller class according to this value this code i am able to access this header in my postman postman is my client right i am able to access this particular response value in my postman that this is my expectation about this code okay now i'll start the application before that go to the controller class in the controller class already i have a code here see here request dot get attribute country i am using using this key set attribute country is a key value is a india right i am changing to value is a india keep it as it is value is a india i am removing this uh, header part now removing this header part then i am passing this country request dot get attribute of country i am i am accessing the country attribute which created in filter which created in filter what is the value of the country is india right that india value come here and the print here okay now i am sending response entity the customer object while sending the response entity what i am doing i am capturing that response here i am capturing the response here the in that response i am adding an other data called i am just placing this filter name then i am adding one value called this header constructed in handler request response filter this header must be populated in postman let's see that Uh, sir, uh, does this new filter work for all methods in our uh, controller class? Yes, yes. This will ex execute for all the controller method. Okay, but we can restrict it to make it work for a particular method. In yeah, we can. I will show that example. We can restrict it. Okay, what is the URL? It's a uh, API customers. API customers, right? The same URL. I'm clearing the server console. I got the response here. See country India. It's coming from this. Uh, this coming from filter. Okay. This coming from filter. Then the filter I'm setting a response. Right. This response should go to the postman. This postman you can see header section. Right. Go to header section. See handler request response filter. Handler request response filter which I set here. That is you can see here the values. This header constructed in. handler request response i am able to see it right 
so if you want to manipulate request and response before processing okay we can use a filter that is the purpose of filter best uh, example is if you want to authorize if you want to authorize particular user uh, username and password we can use filters whenever user send uh, request any endpoint whenever user request any endpoint i want to check that user is a valid user or not okay in such a case we can use filters to validate the given username and password okay that example i will going to show part of spring security okay i will going to use filters only for validating the username and password okay this is um, this example to handling the request and response okay now next example we will going to see how to uh, monitor particular url only how to monitor particular url only okay before that i will going to create one more so, uh, yeah, it's already there is a one, one more mapping is there i'll going to create i'll go to call this also i'll clear this console print get mapping the body you are getting that uh, response body yeah. response body you are getting it what is that uh, response body customer slash print okay. this is a test response entity in this uh, method i am not accessing this particular request right so i am not able to print here definitely not able to print here but you can see the response see here you can see the response so whenever you send a request all the time this filter get invoked okay okay the next my requirement is i want to monitor only this particular endpoint i want to execute the my filter only for this particular endpoint we'll see how to do that okay hmm? new class handle print print api handler handle print api handle print api filter implements filter filters coming from servlet okay so let's over it the method then i have a class example now this uh, this particular filter we cannot uh, mm, create as it is little bit changes because we need to customize right if you if you create like this filter it will invoke all the places now i want to define i want to execute this filter only particular for this endpoint further we need to do some customization further we need to create our configuration file or you can go with this config, configuration file also uh, better you could go with a separate configuration filter config at configuration then paste it here filter register bin this is a api which is coming from filter register bin then which filter you want to configure i want to configure handle print filter then this filter is register been coming from spring framework using add bin annotation i am customizing that my filter
So through this particular method, I am registering particular filter. Through this, through this particular method, I am registering particular filter. Filter. Which filter? Handle print filter. I, am, I want to register. Through this method, I am registering particular filter which I created. While registering, what I am doing here? Register bin dot add URL pattern slash print slash printer. This line is I am initializing the filter register bin object. Filter register bin register bin equal to new filter register bin. Then I am saying register bin dot set filter. I am registering this filter using set filter method. Set filter new handle print filter new handle print filter. Here I am saying at component right. Here I am saying at component. And be, instead of saying component here I am manually initializing here manually initializing here where is that class here yeah. manually I am initializing and registering this filter in, my, in our spring application context then I am saying filter register bin add URL pattern print whenever this URL comes that time only I want to execute this filter whenever this URL comes Part of the rest endpoint. I want to. I want to execute that time only this filter. This is the configuration of this particular line. First line. I am initializing the filter register bin. I am passing generic parameter as a handler handler handle print filter. The filter you want to configure. You want to configure. Then I am registering that filter here using set filter. Then I am defining. When you want to invoke this filter, I want to invoke only whenever any URL is coming with the print. That's it. I want to use. I don't want to use this. This method is not required now. Already, I can use only. Okay. Okay. Just I'll go to give or just when I swap it. That's it. Hmm? The filter. Filter executing, executing plus solid request dot get mm, or something. Get context dot get context path. Let's see what's printing here. Okay, now my filter implementation is done. I'll go to start the server. Server is started. I'll go into invoke uh, post method first. Clearing that everything. So post method executed. That request attribute I'm able to view. Okay, then it is not uh, printing that particular. Okay, though the first filter is to get executing. Now I want to execute second filter slash print. So when I say slash print, then get. It's not printing. Why? 
filter config and saying print right print customer controller is a print why it's not printed everything looks fine but it's not printed okay i uh, will uh, continue this demo by tomorrow time is uh, nine o'clock now okay i think some people wanted to go Mm. We'll continue this example by tomorrow. We'll show them. Okay. Mm. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Mm. Okay. We'll we'll continue this tomorrow. As well as we're going to see how to execute the filter in order. Which filter should be executed first? Which filter should not execute first? Okay. Mm. Okay, sir. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Bye. still not subscribe this channel please subscribe it share this video to your friend circle click bell icon for regular updates thanks for watching this full video